so let's discuss the topic beta function and its properties so beta function and gamma functions are nothing but they come under the category of special functions and the gamma function and beta functions belong to the category of special transcendental functions and are defined in terms of improper definite integrals so they are called as transcendental function because they might be having they are having infinite series so they don't have definite integrals because of this reason they are called as transcendental functions these functions are very useful in many areas like asymptote take series riemann zeta function number theory etc and also have many applications in engineering and physics so we use this uh, make use of these functions in engineering and physics also and uh, here is the definition of uh, beta function so the beta function is denoted by so this greek letter beta beta of m comma n where m comma n is greater than 0 and defined by the and defined by a definite integral as so beta of m comma n is nothing but is equal to integration of 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 into 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 dx so here in integration we are taking x term and here m and n they are the deciding factors so hence beta is written as a uh, depending on m and n numbers and these numbers are always greater than or equal to 0 this m and n is greater than 0 so this is the definition of uh, hmm, beta function so the uh, this is nothing but improper definite integral so now let's look at the properties of these beta functions so beta of m comma n is equal to beta of n comma m that is symmetric property of beta function and beta of m comma n is equal to integration of 0 to infinity x power n minus 1 divided by 1 plus x whole power m plus n dx is equal to integration of 0 to infinity x power m minus 1 by 1 plus x whole power m plus n dx and beta of m comma n is equal to 2 into 0 to pi by 2 sin theta whole power 2m minus 1 cos theta whole power 2n minus 1 dt so these are all the properties of beta function so beta function can be written in this form in this form also so from by taking this form we can make it up to this form and this form from here to this form from this to here so let's see how to make that and let's uh, look at the proofs of these properties of beta function so here let's look at the first property that is to prove that beta of m comma n is equal to beta of n comma n so by definition we know that beta of m comma n is equal to integration of 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 dx so this is the definition so now but we know that integration of 0 to a f of x dx is equal to integration of 0 to a f of a minus x dx so this is the important equation so by making use of this equation we are going to prove this property so in order to understand this equation let's look at an example so here we are doing integration of x so here f of x is nothing but x so it is of the form integration of 0 to a f of x dx 0 to a x dx so here f of x is nothing but x so what we would get from by integration of this uh, x term that is x power n plus 1 by n plus 1. So in the place of n we are having 1. So x power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 that is x square by 2. Now applying limits. So upper limit minus lower limit. So a square by 2 minus 0 by 2 that is nothing but a square by 2. And now 
let's look at the uh, what we would get for the right hand side that is integration of 0 to a f of a minus x dx so integration of 0 to a here in the place of x we have to substitute a minus x so here we are having f of x here we are having f of a minus x so x has to be replaced by a minus x so here here function is only x function is overall function is only x so a minus x if you are having x square then we need to substitute a minus x whole square so let's see what happens so here a minus x dx so let's uh, split the integration so integration of 0 to a a dx minus integration of 0 to a x dx as we know integration of a is a constant so it has to be taken out so integration of dx is nothing but x so applying uh, so here we are having x and next here also integration of x dx is nothing but x square by 2 x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 now we need to apply limits so here here we are all already having a so here in the place of x a a minus 0 upper limit minus lower limit so a minus 0 here also same thing upper limit minus lower limit that is a square by 2 minus 0 square by 2 minus a square by 2 so a square minus a square by 2 a into a a square so a minus 0 is nothing but a so a square minus a square by 2 uh, we get 2a 2a square minus a square by 2 that is nothing but a square by 2 finally so here if we see integration of 0 to a f of uh, 0 to a x dx is a square by 2 in the same manner integration of 0 to a a minus x dx is also a square by 2 so left hand side is equal to right hand side so uh, so this is the meaning of this equation so now in the same manner uh, so th that is the thing so, so in the same manner we can apply this to this uh, beta function so here what we have to do is um, here function is nothing but beta function so beta function is nothing but this integration of 0 to 1 so in the previous slide we are having integration of 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 dx now what we have to do is here a is nothing but 1 and in the fun function is this so here we are having x here here also we are having x so in the place of x what we have to do is uh, we need to replace it by 1 minus x that is nothing but a minus x here a is nothing but 0 sorry 1 so in the place of x 1 minus x so on replacing it so here we are having 1 minus x whole power m minus 1 here also 1 minus 1 minus x so here we are having 1 minus x already so in the place of x 1 minus x so minus of minus of 1 minus x so whole power n minus 1 dx so here 1 minus x whole power m minus 1 and here 1 minus 1 minus so here minus of 1 minus x that is nothing but minus 1 minus into minus plus x minus 1 plus x so plus 1 and minus 1 would get cancelled so finally x only x will be remaining would be remaining in this term so we are having x power n minus 1 so integration of 0 to 1 x power n minus 1 into 1 minus x whole power m minus 1 dx so finally we are having this one so in the place of initially we were having m in the place of n and here we were having n so they both have been exchanged in this so they both have got exchanged so beta of m comma n is nothing but beta of n comma n so if we have proved this symmetric property so if you see here x power m minus 1 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 here x power n minus 1 into, into 1 minus x whole power m minus 1 so this is the symmetric property and next next look at let's look at the another property of beta function that is to prove that beta of m comma n is equal to integration of 0 to infinity x power n minus 1 by 1 plus x whole power m plus n dx and uh, uh, finally 
this is also equal to integration of 0 to infinity x power m minus 1 1 plus x whole power m plus n dx so based on symmetry property we would get this so in the place of n we replace m in the place of n we replace with m so finally here let's uh, look at this proof so by definition we all already know the definition of beta function that is uh, beta of m comma n is equals to integration of 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 into 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 dx so next thing is so what we have to do is here we have to may substitute x with in the place of x we need to substitute 1 by 1 plus y so here we need to replace x by 1 by 1 plus y in order to prove this property so next thing is if we do differentiation on both on both sides of this equation so differentiation of x is nothing but dx and here it is of the form 1 by x form so one minus 1 by x square so you know, differentiation of 1 by x is nothing but uh, minus 1 by x square that is yeah, n into x power n minus 1 differentiation of x power n is nothing but n into x power n minus 1 so in the in that formula you know, differentiation of 1 by x is nothing but minus 1 by uh, x square by using that formula so here minus 1 by x square in the place of x we are having 1 plus y whole square and dy so again differentiating with y so overall if we do differentiation uh, here differentiation of x is nothing but dx and differentiation of this function is nothing but f dash of y into dy so differentiation of f of y function is nothing but f dash of y dy like that we used to get so dy so here from this equation uh, we if we send 1 plus y that side to left hand side it will get multiplied and if we send x to this side right hand side it will get divided so 1 plus y is equal to 1 by x that is nothing but uh, x is nothing but the reciprocal of 1 plus y and 1 plus y is nothing but reciprocal of x so like that and then here we are having now we need to find out the limits as we have replaced x with this 1 by 1 plus y now we have to look at how the limits would change in this case so if we see here when x is equals to here lower limit is 0 now x is 0 then y would be so from this equation 1 by 0 is nothing but undetermined that is infinity and infinity minus 1 is again infinity so y tends to infinity so as x is 0 then y tends to infinity and when x is equals to 1 so when x is equals to 1 1 by 1 1 and here this 1 plus y is equals to 1 so right hand side 1 and left hand side 1 would get cancelled and finally we would have 0 y is equals to 0 so when x is equals to 1 we would have y equals to 0 so lower limit now in this new case when x is replaced with 1 by 1 plus y uh, lower limit would be infinity and upper limit would be 0 so lower limit infinity upper limit 0 and x has been replaced by 1 by 1 plus y here also 1 minus x was there previously so now 1 by 1 plus 5 whole power n minus 1 and here another important thing is differentiation so minus 1 by x is called dy so differentiation of x is nothing but it, it has has to be uh, replaced with this differentiation that is minus 1 by 1 plus y whole square dy so now if we do simplifications so it is of the form a 1 by a whole power m minus 1 that is nothing but 1 by a whole power m minus 1 1 by a power m minus 1 so one in the place of a we are having 1 plus y and here also uh, if we do cross multiplication that is uh, lcm if we take lcm so 1 plus y minus 1 that is nothing but y by 1 plus y so if we solve this and next it is of the form finally we would have the form a by b whole power m so a a power m by a power n so here n minus 1 is there so y power n minus 1 1 plus y whole power n minus 1 and this uh, here minus was there previously now here 
there is no minus that is because here the limits are going from infinity to zero so if we take minus into consideration it is going from zero to infinity so integration of a to b f of x dx is equals to minus integration of b to a f of x dx based on that property so if we are shifting the limits then sign would automatically would get changed so this negative sign we are taking into this integration and it has it is being converted into instead of infinity to zero it will get converted to zero to infinity so beta of m comma n so here if you see here also it is one plus five whole power m minus n here also one plus five whole power n minus one here one plus five whole square so here bases are same but exponents are different so yeah a power m into a power n a power m plus n so 1 plus y whole power m minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus 2. So here 2 you are having here minus 1 minus 1 minus 2. So plus 2 minus 2 would get cancelled. So only m plus n would be remaining. So that's the thing. So here y power n minus 1 whole dy. So simply if we replace y by x. Uh, so we would have x power n minus 1 1 plus x whole power m plus n dx. So just here we want this term to be in the form of x actually of course in y substituting we have taken uh, x is equal to 1, 1 by 1 plus 5 but here just we are shifting the terms so a power m or b power m or c power m they are all the same we are just uh, changing the notations the term which we have used the letter so here just we are changing the letter but not we are uh, we are not making x is equal to y but actually x is 1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus 5. After solvation we are getting this. So we are just replacing the notation used. As usual we used to have only x. Generally we take functions in the form of uh, f of x. So that's why. So from y to x. So finally integration of 0 to infinity x power n minus 1 1 plus x whole power n plus n dx and also by the symmetric property of the beta function so you yeah, already know by the symmetric property of beta function beta of n comma n is equal to beta of n comma n so in the place of n we replace by m so x power n minus 1 x power m minus 1 and uh, in the place of uh, m n so m plus n so finally we will get again m plus n only so here uh, n plus m n plus m is equal to is nothing but m plus n so finally we will get this so finally we have proved this so we need to prove this property so x power n minus 1 1 plus x whole power x, x uh, m plus n and under limits are from 0 to infinity here also the limits are from 0 to infinity and we have finally proved the second property of beta function so and finally next let's have a look at the third property of beta function and its proof so to prove that beta of m comma n is equal to 2 into integration of 0 to pi by 2 sin theta whole power 2m minus 1 cos theta whole power 2n minus 1 theta d theta so by definition every property has been derived from this definition of beta function only so that is beta of m comma n is equal to integration of 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 into 1 minus x whole power n minus 1 dx so now what we have to do is here if we see we are having sin theta cos theta but actually the definition of beta function we are having x 1 minus x so by looking at this we can easily notice that we need to replace x with some trigonometric function that is sin theta or cos theta so initially we have replaced x with 1 by 1 plus x so here by looking at this form uh, we can say uh, x has to be replaced with some trigonometric function that is sin theta cos theta so here we are replacing x with x is equal to sin square theta because here 2 m minus 1 is there if there was m minus 1 we could have uh, taken sin theta maybe but here it is 2 m minus 1 so put x is equal to sin square theta so differentiating on both sides we would get dx and differentiation of x is nothing but dx and differentiation of this function so this is of the form x power n n into x power n minus 1 so 2 into x power n minus 1 that is sin theta sin 
theta whole power 2 minus 1 that is nothing but sin theta and again this is uh, differentiation of sin theta is nothing but cos theta and d theta so here the original function is sin square theta so on differentiation 2 sin theta we would get and differentiation of sin theta is nothing but cos theta and d theta so this is the differentiation of dx so when x is equal to 0 now what we have to do is now we have to already we have changed replaced x with sin square theta now we have to change the limit also limits also so we have to take care of the limits now so when x is equal to 0 when x is 0 then theta is also 0 because sin 0 is 0 and sin square 0 is also 0 whole square sin square theta is nothing but sin theta whole square so 0 square again we would get 0 and next when x is equal to 1 so when x is equal to 1 sin 90 is nothing but 1 and 1 square is nothing but 1 hence based on that property so sin uh, sorry uh, based on that uh, value of trigonometric function so sin 90 is nothing but 1 so 1 square is 1 hence we are having lower limit has 0 and upper limit is pi by 2 so now we need to replace so x has been replaced with sin square theta and here also 1 minus sin square theta and dx is replaced with 2 sin theta cos theta d theta so we have replaced it and limits 0 to 1 here uh, 0 to pi by 2 integration okay so here we are having 2 2 is nothing but a constant so it has been taken out and sin square theta whole power m minus 1 is nothing but sin theta whole power 2 into m minus 1 so a power m whole power n is nothing but a power m n so sin theta whole power 2 into m minus 1 that is nothing but 2m minus 2 here 1 minus sin square theta is nothing but cos square theta so cos square theta whole power n minus 1 cos square theta whole power n minus 1 that is nothing but cos theta whole power 2 into n minus 1 that is 2n minus 2 and here we are having sin theta cos theta d theta and 2 has been taken out initially now if we see here here sin theta here also sin theta so here sin theta power 2m minus 2 here sin theta whole power 1 so a power m into a power minus 1 that is nothing but a power m minus 1 so or a power m into a power a power m into one uh, a power that is a power m into a that is nothing but a power m plus one so here sin 2m basis of same sin theta sin theta here power is 2m minus 2 here power is 1 so 2m minus 2 plus 1 that is nothing but 2m minus 1 and here also same cos theta here we are having cos theta power 1 here cos theta whole power 2n minus 2 so cos theta whole power 2n minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 so 2 into integration of 0 to pi over 2 sin theta whole power 2n minus 1 cos theta whole power 2n minus 1 d theta so in this way we have proved this property that is third property of beta function so, okay so thank you